Hello and welcome uh, to uh, example two of the HVAC tool uh, training for standard calculators. Uh, this will be a uh, more complicated example than example one with the office. This is a high-tech biotech customer. We're going to leverage uh, trend data instead of just using the simple inputs from the tool. And I'll give you a little description of the customer. The customer has three 250-ton chillers, and they want to replace one of them with a Tile 24 chiller. PG&E is analyzing the potential energy savings and incentives if the customer decides instead to install a more efficient chiller than Title 24. PG&E is also investigating the potential savings for installing VFDs on the condenser water pumps. So I'm going to let Melina uh, analyze this, uh, this building using the simulation of the HVAC tool and run through the uh, building of how to do it. So take it away, Melina. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. Okay, so I won't go over the first step, but once that you open uh, the calculator, this is what you are going to where you are going to land. The two important things are the zip code and the making sure that we have a dollar per kWh and dollar per sem so that we can complete our financial analysis at the end of uh, of of this uh, calculation. Uh, in this case, we have labs, so I changed the type of facility here, and we are replacing a chiller and then uh, looking at some other uh, potential for um, for the chill wire system. So let's create a chill wire system. So we have to name it. In this case, there is only one. If you have several chill wire systems that you want to analyze, then you will have to click on uh, this uh, this here several times. So in this case, it's the chill wire system, and so we just have one, and we are going to let the macro think a little bit. Okay, so as the as before, what uh, clicking in this in in this um, cell here, what we will do is that it will create chill wire system, and then it will create an engineering report. Um, in this case, the, based on my experience, this chill wire system has is the most extensive one and has the most uh, information that that needs to be inputted. As always, green is baseline, blue is proposed, and yellow is either to enable the measure and disable it, or to let us know if uh, we are using simple data or trend data. And in this case, I'm going to show you uh, how to use the trend data. Uh, application for, for the calculator. So as we said before, we have three chillers. In this case, they are 250, two of them, and then one has a, it's a 100 ton chiller. Uh, in this case, let's imagine that they have these three chillers, but one of them is, um, is just they are not using it. So we are going to remove it, and I want to show that uh, just so that um, we, um, I can show something else later. But in this case, we have a main chiller that is um, it's 0 0.55 kW per ton, and this second one, the lag chiller, is the same, and the designed actual wire temperature is 44. So the starting time and the ending time, we are going to leave it this way. Is uh, these chillers start at 4 a.m. and they end or they they are turned off at 6 p.m. We will pay attention to the proposed later because I know that we are replacing a chiller. But as always, the key thing here is to first define how the chillers operate right now. So we have to input all the all the information for the for the baseline system. So um, let's imagine that uh, we, for, for the building cooling load, uh, we have, uh, this is how much, uh, so we are, we are saying that the building has a cooling load of 50 at um, 55 degrees outside air, and then it has a cooling load of 400 at 90 degrees outside air. And uh, we are going to keep, we can, to, we can discuss the proposed one later, but I, I want to make sure that we remember that we will have to look at the proposed, uh, proposed uh, inputs later. So in this case, we have one primary pump per, 
pillar. So we are going to remove the primary uh, pump number three, and we are going to keep the efficiencies. Always keep the efficiencies of the of the equipment so that we don't get any errors. And in this case, we have a flow of 400 GPM for each of the for each of the pumps and a head of 20, and we are going to leave the efficiencies as they are here. The secondary pumps, they are not attached to any chiller, so basically we have a secondary pump system for, uh, for our uh, chill water system. So in this case, we have an 800 uh, GPM with 30 horsepower and a motor efficiency of 80% and a pump efficiency of 80% as well. And uh, we, um, you know, we are estimating that we have two pump um, operating at 80 degrees and uh, one at 65. And let's see, let's look at the cooling towers. So in this case, we don't have a cell cooling tower, but still we are going to leave the efficiencies uh, there. But for the um, for the first cooling tower and the second cooling tower, we are assuming that they are uh, they have a capacity of 300 tons each, and the uh, horsepower of the fans is 15. So let me see. Okay. And uh, the efficiency of the motors is 85%, and we can change the minimum fan speed of the of the cooling tower fans to maybe let's change it to 25%, and let's see what happens. And we have condenser water fan or condenser water pumps that have a flow of 1600. So just think about when we are looking at this input. These are the inputs that you will be required to go and get in the field. So all these green ones, make sure that you go out there and you you get them. And the motor efficiency for the condenser water pumps is 85%, and the pump efficiency is 80. And we also have to define how many pumps are operating depending on the outside air. So the harder it is, the more pumps they will be running, and the colder it is, the, the, you know, we will only have one. The chill water plant uh, lockout, so when does the plant start, uh, stop running? So at uh, any temperatures, um, colder than 50 degrees in this case, this high-tech biotech uh, turns off these, these chillers. And this is uh, the chiller uh, staging uh, sequence. As I said in the, in the previous one, if you have any questions about what is being, uh, is being or how it's being used, we can go always to the processing uh, section. But let's look right now. The engineer has gone out there and they've, he found out that, or she found out that there are two chillers uh, and this is how they run. So the first one is chiller one is the lead one and then chiller two is the lag one. So whenever the, um, whenever the tonnage is between 250 and 500, then both of them are running. If you have any questions about how that works, then you can always uh, find all of that in here. So let me see. Okay. Let's see what we were doing. Okay. Uh, so next thing, uh, we need to define the chill water uh, temperature for, for this system. In this case, I'm going to say it's constant. Uh, it doesn't change, and we are always um, you know, what we found is that this system is always providing chill water, chill water at 45 degrees, no matter what the temperature is. So you put 45 and 45, and then just put two different uh, outside temperatures here, and then the tool will take that as a constant at 45. The same goes for condenser water temperature reset. The customer runs the uh, condensers at uh, the same uh, temperature, in this case 75 degrees, no matter what the outside temperature is outside. And in this case, we don't have an economizer, so we are just going to remove anything related to, to the economizer. And the same goes for the cooling towers. How are they staged? So we are just going to uh, say how they are staged. In this case, cooling tower one is on 
for anything that is below 300, and Cooling Tower 1 and 2 is going to be, they are going to be both working for any, uh, any need between 300 tons and 600 tons. Now we get to the secondary chill water pump uh, inputs. So in this case, um, we are going to say um, that they are BFD, BFD control. And uh, let me see what kind of measures we have. I don't remember. BFDs, okay, so I'm still in the, BFDs on the condenser water pumps and then replacing the, the, the chiller. Okay, perfect. So in this case, we know that uh, the secondary chill water pumps are BFD run. And so we can change the minimum uh, speed that we've seen into um, in, in the, in the, in the chiller. So similar to what we've done, we just put all the information here. Uh, in this case, the condenser water pumps, I'm going to jump, jump to the next one. The condenser water pumps are constant because we, are in, uh, we found an opportunity to install BFDs, so this is how we do it. But the key here is that um, I was able, or the engineer who went out there, they were able to find some trend data regarding how these uh, condenser water pumps were running. So instead of uh, using simple data and using these inputs here, I'm going to uh, use the baseline trend data. And in this case, because the, the pumps are, um, you know, they are constant, the, the inputs for the trend data are pretty easy, but let me show you where that goes. So you put that over here. So see the baseline trend data, this is green. Green means baseline input. And so in this case, we will have to define how many condenser water pumps are on and what's their speed. One thing to remember is that we understand that there are a lot of beans uh, here for one per temperature, but you are not required to uh, put the, um, you are not required to put the, uh, the number of condenser water pumps and the, and the speed for each bin. In fact, the, the tool has been created uh, in a way that you can just input whichever bins you have and you can leave the other ones empty. So let me see, in this case, the engineer has gone out there and they found some, uh, they have some trend data that they have uh, analyzed in a, in a different Excel file. This tool won't analyze the, uh, the, the trend data that you have received, but it will take whatever you have uh, analyzed in a different place. So we will just copy paste from a different Excel file. Okay, let me see if this works. Okay, so in this case, we have always two pumps running and they are always 100% of, uh, of speed. So see how I left some, uh, some bins empty? That's how you should do. Don't, don't attempt to uh, input every single one of them. Just leave them blank. If you, you know, if when you went out there, it wasn't that hot and you don't have any temperatures above uh, 81 degrees, then that's fine. Just leave it how it is. And so what we need to do now is uh, quickly uh, look at our, uh, look at our um, baseline. So we have inputted all our baseline data. So we have the system is defined now. So that's, that's what we need to do. And the next step is to look at the two measures that we have found. And if I remember correctly, one is that we are installing a high efficiency chiller, and then the other one is that we are installing, or we might be installing BFDs on the condenser water pumps. So let me see. So the first thing is that we need to enable those, um, those measures. Okay, so the first one is that we are replacing a chiller, so we are enabling uh, the chiller replacement. Um, what you need to make sure is that in this case the, the calculator will use all the proposed uh, all the proposed inputs for this for this case. So if you, for example, if the building load hasn't changed, just make sure that the, your inputs are the same because otherwise it will use the proposed inputs. But in this case, we have them the same. This red star has gone away. We are safe. Um, but we are replacing the main chiller. This chiller is pretty old, and the customer wants to install it for something uh, for something better. 
And so uh, in this case, we don't have desert chiller. We are going to remove it uh, again. Um, we can remove all of this, but let's leave it how it is right now. So we are replacing the main chiller. So what kind of chiller we are replacing it with? We are replacing it with a water cool non-centrifugal. And why is this important to determine this? Because this determines the Tidal 24 baseline. And where can you see what kind of efficiency we are using for Tidal 24? Just go to the brains of the calculator here in the processing section, and you can re review every single input. And in this case, these are the Tidal 24 uh, inputs. So if you choose a water cool non-centrifugal that is um, in between uh, 0 to, you know, in based on these capacities, this is the this is the efficiency that you are going to to check. So just make sure that um, you know that you are using the right you know that you are looking at this and making sure that you you have the right um, you know the right baseline. So in this case, we have a main chiller that we are going to replace. We are not making anything uh, any system bigger, so we are going to keep this the same. So see, in this case now we have all the inputs are the same, but we are going to um, we are going to replace this chiller for a chiller that is 0 0.4 kW per ton. So that's the only difference that we have in here. So we are done with the first uh, with the first measure. We can say that we estimate that this is going to cost eighty thousand dollars. So we are going to put the cost over here. Um, the second measure was that we might wanted to install uh, a BFD on the condenser water pumps. And because we are in the investigation phase, we don't have trend data for the proposed phase. So even though we use the baseline trend data for, for input for, for, for this analysis, we are going to use the simple data for the proposed. So in this case, we are going to say that um, the speed of the of the pumps are going to change from like let's say 50% to 100%. Um, so basically this means that uh, at 60 degrees outside their temperature the pump speed will be 50 and uh, at 80 it will be 100. And um, anything bigger than 80 it will be 100 and anything lower than uh, 60 it will be 50. So in this case, we are going to change it to BFD. And we have to enable this to run this measure. And we are going to say that this is going to cost, let's say, $22,000. And so the next step will be to calculate the measures. I want to say something. Uh, since, we are, um, since we are replacing the chiller, uh, that triggers Title 24. We, in this case, we are going to have some uh, savings from Title 24 here. Uh, the other measures, they all run. Uh, the baseline is the existing, whatever we have defined here. But in this case, the uh, the calculator will um, will calculate the savings from the existing baseline and the savings from Title 24. And that way we can, you know, we can see if this is a two code measure or if it's above code and then how much how much the customer will be saving in the facility and then how much P and can claim. So let's have a quick review of what we've done. We've enabled the chiller replacement and we also enabled the condenser water pump BFD. And so now we are going to cross our fingers and we are going to click calculate measures and see what happens. And so the macro is thinking and is looking at every single um, measure. And for those measures that we are not enabling, the savings should be zero. Okay, so the calculations are done. Okay, so basically, let's review the savings here. So these are the savings from the existing baseline, and these are the savings from, for Tile 24. In this case, because we are replacing a chiller, we have some savings here. 
and see how the savings from Title 24 are smaller than for the existing baseline. That makes sense because in general what we find is that the existing conditions are uh, a little bit worse than required by Title 24. So it will be normal to have lower savings in the, in the Title 24 uh, section over here. And so one thing that you will, might want to review is that uh, where are we getting the savings? In this case, uh, the chiller replacement brings our savings in the chiller section and then the condenser pump BFD on the condenser pump. We don't want to see condenser pump BFD and then looking at the savings and the cooling tower fan. So just review, make sure that all the uh, savings look good. Uh, we can put the incentives here. I'm guessing this is like 15. Um, 15 cents. So let's look. Let's calculate the let's calculate the incentives that this customer is gonna get. And okay, instead of looking at at the total savings from the from the existing baseline, we are going to use the Title 24 savings. So we are going to do this, and then we are going to do this. Okay. So this customer can expect to get eleven thousand dollars in in incentives, and then. This is going to be eight cents, and then no KW savings. So let's see how much we will get. Okay, so this customer can expect to get fifteen thousand dollars in incentives. So once that we are done with our calculations, we can create the engineering report that will summarize everything. So let's see. Okay, so. This one, uh, what we'll do is that it will give us a little summary. Let me show you. It will, you will have a space to have your assumptions here uh, in case you want the CPUC or any technical reviewer to know what kind of assumptions you made. And then any project notes that you think are important, you can also document them here. And the, the report has different sections. One is the summary of the systems. In this case, we are just uh, we just inputted the chill water system, so we have everything here and the cooling tower system as well. Um, and then we will have the energy savings. How much are the energy savings for each of the measures? And this is here. And then what's the financial analysis for, for them? And do they meet the savings to investment ratio that is required right now for, for our measures? And it will also have uh, some information of, an indi indication of what will be required for the MMB based on the energy savings that we that we calculated. And Brian, I think that I covered everything. Thank you for joining us for example number two. I hope that this was useful. Thanks. <laughs>